Hey everyone, it's your host Cyber Gaming Studios and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys on how to use any Android gamepad controller. It doesn't matter what type, it can be from the ones that you just put your phone in, it can be an actual controller, any kind of controller on PS4 Remote Play. Now this is one something that I personally found because I've wanted to dig around and I wanted to, to to play PS4 on my phone, but I didn't want it to like use it as my phone as a little display, put it on something and then just instantly play it like that. It can be very, um, you know, annoying and stressful to your neck. You have to hold your neck and your hands like that. And it can be very stressful, especially if you want to Chromecast it, which is very terrible. And because you get latency, more latency than what you originally have. And that's pretty much how I see it mostly of all. So... In this video, we're going to show you guys on how to make any Android um, um, controller um, to be supported. Right now, I have on my Note 10 Plus, I have a, a Pega Red 9 controller, and it's one of the best controllers that I've ever used, especially for the Note 10, since the Note 10 has a bigger size. It's the, one of the best ones. I think you should get the upgrade version if you're going to plan to get this one. Don't get the, 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 the older version. Just get the newer version. You'll, you'll, you will not regret it. However... We're not talking about my controller. We're talking about PS4 Remote Play. So the, there are some things that you need to be aware of. So the first thing is that this tutorial requires somewhat of money. And not money towards me, but money that you need to be able to even use this kind of method. Because this method may be, most of it is maybe free, but getting the application that you need is requires about four four bucks. So just just keep that in mind. The second thing is that you're going to need a PC. This is something that you can't avoid. I wish you could avoid, but you can. It's something that everyone has to deal with. And I'll also leave in the description below a full-on you know, tutorial on how to do this if you need more help. But if you're a person who needs more visual help, specifically on how to get things done, um, everything that does for PC is also in the description. It'll show you how to install, how to activate mostly from the pure PC. So if you want to get that little help, you can activate the application. But right now for this video, we're only showing you how to do it, how to, you know, map everything like that. So it's just going to be more of a full on, full death um you know, tutorial. So let's get started. So once you get, once you pay for the app, the app you need is an app called Panda Gamepad Pro. I left the link in the description so you can go over and purchase it yourself. It's for, for $3.99, so it's not that much. If you look up down the reviews, the reviews are kind of bad, but it's because it's like 2.6, as you can see, 2.5 actually. And it's, I have 9,000 reviews. It seems pretty bad. And some people do have some problems, but in this tutorial, it's going to elevate that. So um, I'm going to try to do my best to to summarize and help you guys as much. Once you purchase this application, you will you will need this application to use for PS4 Remote Play. I know it's pretty not worth it for the reviews, but because of how the reviews are, but you sometimes it may work differently for you than others, and pretty much it has worked differently for me. So let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is you need to have PS4 Remote Play installed. If you haven't got the PS4 Remote Play, there are two different versions. There is the Play Store version, which has no mods, no HDR, no 4K, and then you have the modded version, which I have currently have installed, which has HDR and 4K, um, you know, resolution, and it's pretty amazing. So, it's don't. So, how to get this started is that once you purchase the application, you get everything activated. What you'll need to do is that you'll need to launch Pandora Gamepad Pro. Do not launch PS4 Remote Play because the Gamepad doesn't just overlay by itself. It has to have you know a support from input from you. So, you'll need to enter Panda Gamepad Pro. And you will see that my device, PG-907S, is enabled. You also have to make sure that when you do activate this application through PC, make sure that USB debugging is enabled. And when you do plug in your phone into your PC, you will need it to, to um, enable developer options to be able to do that. So if you haven't had developer options to enable that, then you need to do that. If you need, if you, as well, when you connect your, your phone to your PC, which I got sidetracked, I don't know why, you'll need it to set your USB connection to charge only instead of USB file transfer, et cetera, et cetera. This is, this is very necessary because it utilizes a, a, a weird way, like a CMD prompt, so you need to do this immediately. I'll have more instructions 
down below if you need more help activating and if that's a really issue that it, it, I cleared it, I, I put it made it into steps so it just makes it more more easier for people to understand. Once you actually get everything installed and set up, you can just launch PS4 Remote Play. It will launch and you'll see that there is no absolutely no um, controls yet. If I go up here, I can already sit, tell you guys I'm gonna I'm gonna enable I'm gonna enable. I don't know why it's, I think it's because my screen's away. I'm gonna I'm gonna enable you know the buttons to show for right now so I can show you guys of this video. You can actually have it as well where it doesn't show but it will still do what it needs to do. So once you actually do this, all you need to do is click start and this is where the magic comes from. When you start it and you connect to your PS4, when you connect to your PS4, and I don't know why my controller just did that, but it's it's kind of be buggy right now. All right, so click start, and it, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> so I'm not gonna do the video so raw right now. So right now I can tell you guys that it's working. I have using my analog stick, um, my left analog stick to do this, and I can press B, and you see that I'm pressing the buttons, and it pretty works pretty well. There are a few things that you need to be aware of when you do this. Is that I'm not going to go into a game simple because I actually this is my second time recording this video over again because my first video got a copyright strike simple because I played this game right here. This show I, I, I ran this game and I had no uh, no no um, music playing and they still copyrighted my video because I played like an old old 80s song and there was no music coming in. And I have no idea. I think this copyright is bullshit. <laughs> so it's pretty amazing that you can do this. So how to set up your your mapping and how does that work? So there is an icon up here that looks like a panda that's going down, looking down at you, and you'll see a when you press it, you'll see all of the buttons that you can map. When you do add, when you do first start this for the first time, there will be a few little buttons, but you need to do much of a more of an input. So in order to add a button, you need to press over here at the top. There's like a little plus icon, and you're gonna see four different keys. There's left analog stick, there's right analog stick. If your controller has two and two and dual analog sticks, I would recommend you getting a control that has two analog sticks. You have a D-pad, you have a key, and you have the and that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's all I have. So when you do set up this control, set up everything, you want to stay away from this D-pad button. And I'm gonna explain to you why. You see this field that's right around the around the little D-pad icons. You can expand this as much as big as you want. But you also need to make sure that the buttons in the, within this field, like if any buttons goes within this field, they will interact with your D-pad button. I personally don't have a problem with it, and I haven't personally tested it, but I tested it only a little bit and I really didn't like it. And now I'm gonna explain to you why. Whenever you go into your press your D-pad button, sometimes when you have the D-pad on here, it would press two of the buttons simultaneously. And I understand that there's some games that will require you to do that. And if you want to do that, that's up to you. You just have to configure it in a way where it's best for you. And it works optimally without having to mess with you and your gameplay. I understand that there are a lot of people that... Um, let's actually turn off this audio for this, for this because it can be very loud and probably a lot of people don't like it. So, yeah, there you go. So, you have different opportunities to do a lot of things. So, here's how to configure it. So, you say if you want to, you want the X button to be whatever. You know, default by Android is similar to Xboxes, so it's not gonna, most not ever change. So, what you need to do is enable, press a key, it will enable key. And all you have to do is, while it's, while it's tickering, you press a button that you will specifically want, and you just move that to whatever you want. So say if you want this to be the X button, you would move this to the X button right here over that option. If you're having trouble, if you're having trouble to find the X button, what I would recommend you doing is just going back, tap it, come back, put that by the button, and then go back to where the X button is. You only have a certain amount of time before it actually disappears, and the, the on-screen but touch buttons disappear. But once you get the hang of it, it doesn't have to necessarily, the button has to be directly on the on exactly in on the button in the middle it could be anywhere on the button as long as it's touching the button and it's giving you input just like this you'll be perfectly fine and i think that is really amazing now 
I probably will want to go in the, into a game, and um, I'm not I'm not sure which game because I'm afraid to get copyright strikes specifically, specifically because for the intro songs, and I don't want that to happen. So take this with a grain of salt. And I can just write in the menus. I can press triangle, and it won't do anything because I'm in a folder. But if I press triangle here, it's not going to do anything. But if I press start, which is on my controller, it says start. You can it will act as options button, which is pretty pretty nice. The only thing I would recommend you guys when you do try to install it to run this is that you'll need to turn up the sensitivity of your analog sticks, which is right here. I have left and right already set up. And the reasons for this, you need to you need to do this, is simply because PS4 Remote Play wasn't originally created for any Android gamepads. It was only created for PS4 Remote Controller. So it can only recognize the actual sensitivity of the PS4 controller. However, you can mimic that by just going up to the Panda icon, head over to the settings, and it's called POV Speed. I'll increase it all the way up to the max. And what this will do is that it will increase the sensitivity of your analog stick so you don't get any kind of lag or input delay. I, I, some games, it does suffer depending on where you're at in, in, your, in your living room or how fast your internet connection speed is. So don't always blame the keypad for always for doing it. However, I would recommend you doing it just for it to have a start. And it's pretty amazing. Once you get everything set up, it's very fluent. It's really nice. I would highly recommend you guys. I don't have this in all in full 1080p. I have this in 540p for the actual remote report playing, just for the FPS reasons and for this video. But it's pretty nice and it works really well. It's not gonna, you're not gonna miss you're not gonna notice anything that's wrong with it. You can play a game instantaneously with any Android controller and with the Red Knight having dual ones and they can just like, extend and. Uh, I can put my phone right to the middle. It feels like I'm playing a portable system, and it's freaking amazing. I know that a lot of people may not favor this because it's not coming from the official, but it's better than nothing. And to be honest, I'm on Android Pie right now, and Android 10 only supported with PS4 control, PS4 controller, uh, which is unfortunate. But this is the best way to do it, and I think that a lot of you guys should invest money in it. Now, is this practical for to use? For PS for their PS4, maybe it, it really depends on the person and if they had the money to fork over and the time to fork over to do all this stuff. It's very not complex. It's very easy to be honest, but it it, it can vary different to, to different per person to person. And to to be honest, if you really want to wait, if you really want to use your Android control controller, then you can. I would definitely do this. If it doesn't bother you to not just use your hands or just use the PS4 controller, then you don't have to use this application. This is for those people who have Android gamepads and just want to use an Android gamepad instead of having to like put their phone on uh, on something to hold it up and then having the controller just to play on their phone in another room when they can just be on their four and PS4 uh, on the other. It just doesn't make no kind of sense, especially if you your PS4 is in the opposite room and you're in the bedroom and you don't want to get up. You can play PS4 with your gamepad, which is pretty nice. Other than that, that's how much. That's all I had for this video. But beyond, before we end this video, there is a there is something that is different about this this mapping um, system is that you won't be able to exit normally. So if I say, for example, I wanted to go back, it says back is invalid while keep mapping is enabled. The reasons for this is simply because it's not running the application within the application; it's overlaying over the application, so it acts similarly to like if you're pressing a button on the controller, it's also pressing the button on the screen, which is pretty nice. But if you really want to exit that piece from remote play safely, what you need to do is head over to the panda icon, and on the on the right right of the of the of the toolbar, you'll see a, like a little green icon like a little green switch. Press that over and you'll see that all of your inputs have disappeared. It doesn't want to work anymore. So now you can exit out of PS4 Remote Play and get out of here. Once you actually exit out, I would have to press back. It will stop the mapping and you'll be presented back to the Gamepad Pro Beta's main menu and you can launch another game if you want to. I would just highly suggest to stay, as I said, stay away from Octopus because it will crash PS4 Remote Play consistently and there's no way around it. And I don't think that Octopus is going to do anything to fix it. That's how it is. And since Octopus runs everything within within the application, things are not going to 
things are not going to work out very well. And some games are actually not being supported anymore. So you might want to go and get this one for for your pain in the buck. And if there's anything other better, if there's any um, mapper that's better than this, let me know in the comment section below. Because right now, so far, this is the only thing I could find on the Play Store. And yeah. If you guys did enjoy this video, I hope you guys did enjoy it as much as I did making it. But regardless, if you guys found this video very useful, I would love it and appreciate that if you smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're if you're new to see more videos similar to this. And if you guys want to see more videos, leave me a topic in the comment section below of what you guys want me to make make a tutorial about next. Thank you guys, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.